Okay, so finally it is time to port an Echo CS590 Timberwolf. This is my first attempt. I've never really even been down in there. Uh, so we're gonna figure out this out. Now this video, I am pretty sure that this is going to be a, like a multi-video series. However, I don't know, haven't edited it yet. So I don't know. Ow! Don't poke yourself with the screwdriver Bodhi. So, um, what I'm trying to say is, is I'm not sure what this particular video is going to be, but I have a feeling that this particular video is going to just be a quick, hey, look at these two pistons. They're the same, or they're different, because I have a 620 piston for this that I'll probably be using. Um, but anyways, yeah, we're gonna try and get this done in one day, one shot. Man, this saw is so clean. Um, yeah, this makes me think that the, the crank seals didn't go bad at all. What went bad was the guy just probably had a dull chain and kept running it and digging it and digging it into the wood and just overheated it. The muffler didn't have a mod or anything like that, so anyways. But we're gonna try and port this thing up and see what it does. And I'll be stopping the video and then uh, turning it back on to show y'all what I come up with. Oh, it's coming apart nicely. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right, stopping the video. Okay, so things of note. Um, this is what I was most interested in, uh, the 590 piston. 620 piston. Uh, the only difference that I can see at all is the 620 takes two rings, the 590 takes one. Um, Eric, you were saying that uh, the 620 is a domed piston, the 590 is not. It's incorrect. They are both domed. They are both domed the same amount as well. They are both the same uh, skirt length. I just measured them with my caliper. They're both the, the same. So the only difference in these two pistons that I can tell is that one, the 590, only has one ring. The 620 has two rings. That's it. That's the only difference. So would it be worth it to upgrade a piston? Not sure, but I can tell you one thing. I'm probably not going to do it whenever I build my Timberwolf. So, um... Yeah, I'll go with one ring. It's just fine, fine and dandy with me. All right, the cylinder. Um, of course, you know, that, that one thing I, I love about Huskies is, and steel may be like this as well, the modern ones, they, they pretty much all use this gasket material for the base that's like, um, that's like <sighs> plasticky, sort of. I don't know what to call it. I love it. That's the best gasket material ever because you can use it over and over again. Uh, Echoes, they still stick with the old style, which is like a felt. And um, every single time you take one of these apart, unless you're working with a brand new saw, they always come apart. And I, I really like the old or the new style gaskets, and I wish they would go with that. But uh, yeah, so I couldn't save the gasket. The cylinder looks like it's gonna clean up just fine. Uh, another note is that the crank seals in these are extremely difficult to get out. Um, and you know, I debated whether or not I should do it even because, um, because it's clear that, you know, like this saw, the amount of damage that it that happened, I bet you it was just, I bet you the guy ran it with a doll chain and he just sat there and overheated it. 
still had the stock exhaust on it and everything and so all that heat was held right there and he's just trying to get through a great big huge piece of wood he probably just simply overheated it and that's all that happened because this this cylinder looks very good and usable anyways on with more work that's all i got to tell you for now wish me luck okay so here we are um this was a quite a unique little cylinder if you ask me oh, i got a lot of stuff in there from the sandpaper let me get that out look at that good enough for me to show you um so yeah the the numbers on this thing was uh we we're looking at 76 on the intake uh uh 111 on the exhaust 111 and a half something like that and we had uh, 24 degrees of blowdown so um i ended up i uh, raised the exhaust roof a lot i was shooting for uh 104 and we, we don't know what we got yet but i had to move that exhaust roof up a lot and so that enlarged my exhaust port a lot so i didn't do anything didn't widen it or anything like that on the transfers, I was shooting for 18 degrees of blowdown. Maybe I got it, maybe I didn't, we'll see. But um, tons of work on those upper transfers. I mean, because they were, whew, whoa. It was all the way up at 136 degrees uh, on the transfer opening. I had to go all the way down to 122 degrees and so or all the way up i should say but um yeah got them going straight across pretty much you know the the upper transfers the lowers i didn't do anything besides you know uh where the gasket sits i rounded it over so that it would flow in there smoothly i cut um i cut this cylinder skirt quite a bit it did stick out to about right there you know so I cut that back and then I just did a little bit of work like that so that it makes it smooth going in there. I did not hog them out at all. Um, the intake, all I did was rough it up a little bit. That's it uh, because my intake numbers were once I cut the, I cut the base, I think I took about uh, 20 thousands off of it, something like that, with a gasket now i have uh 20 24 thousandths on my squish so we're going to call it good we got it done we got the the we got the ports uh chamfered and we're ready to throw it back on so and then i'll get the final numbers and let you know all right so i hit my numbers 78 on the intake uh which is 156 degrees of duration Exhaust opening is 103, 154 degrees of duration. Transfers open at 123, which is 20, uh, 20 degrees of blowdown. I was aiming for 18 degrees of blowdown, but let's, uh, it's running great. I've heat cycled it a couple times, and I'm getting ready to put it in wood. But uh, it's, it's running fantastic, so we'll see how it does in the wood. Hey, this is that white oak that honestly I don't even want to cut into, but that's what I got. It, it's the hardest thing I've ever cut. My God, it's hard. So, here we go.
it's cutting in the wood when it just free free flowing down in the wood all 24 inches it's pulling 10.4 10,400 rpms whenever i dog it in it'll drop down to about 9,000 yeah she runs jobs all this is nothing special um i got a few more tricks up my sleeve for my own personal dire wolf gonna take a little bit more time and everything but uh andre gonna shit his pants when he runs this thing this runs good this runs very very good very happy about that i have little doubt that it would beat the uh john's red 2258 serious I mean, the 2258 would probably still pull higher RPMs, so in smaller wood, it'd be better. But man, that's a 24 inch bar buried in the hardest wood that this old boy's ever cut. That white oak knot is hard. And, uh, boy, she's cutting it. I mean, that's something else. So earlier, whenever you saw me, probably saying something, it's one thing to get it going and then put it in the wood but whenever i was down in it all 24 inches buried and i would let it stop and then just trigger it and it start starts cutting all 24 inches of it 
that's got some really excellent low RPM throttle response and she pulls she pulls chain Whenever it breaks in. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. Seriously. I am stoked. It's only gonna get better. Yeah, that thing runs great. That's that's something else. I barely even touched the lowers, the lower transfers. Seriously. Barely even touched them. And uh, the uppers, man, I had to take a lot of meat out. I mean, a lot. They, we're talking, hell, I don't know, three or four millimeters of material. And it was awkward the way it was set up, too, because the transfers came up and really had a strong angle to shoot it up towards the top of the combustion chamber. Well, one of you guys, one of you subscribers was like, oh, no, it gets better if you, if you do it at a 90 degree angle so it goes, goes straight across the top of the piston. Well, that's what I did. And didn't even touch the intake other than rough it up a bit. Raised the hell out of the exhaust roof. But uh, yeah, it's great. And it's also a testament to you don't have to swap over to that 620 car. Yeah, you'll probably get a lot more, you know, not a lot, but you'll probably get more power. Uh, but this one doing great and at the same time uh, like the I did not modify the high jet all I did was remove the limiter caps shave those nubs off and put them back on so that I could tune the carburetor and that's it I did not plug the high jet so um, very happy I hope you are too <laughs> 